Hello, my name's Paul Ainsworth and I'm talking to you today from Mahe, our cookery school and development kitchen in Padstow, about one of the most brilliant pieces of kit I've ever used, the Kenwood Titanium Chef Patissier XL. Now, where do I start? This literally is a brilliant, brilliant piece of kit, piece of engineering, and so well made. Even the more simple things like coming with two bowls, a five litre bowl and a seven litre bowl, we're gonna be using the proving element on it. Yep, it actually has a warming element where you can melt chocolate, you can melt butter, we can prove our dough. Probably one of my favorite things on this machine is the fact that we have the weighing scales. I mean, that I just think is fantastic. So let's start our recipe. I'm gonna be making warm custard donuts. So with a donut dough, you're using an enriched dough. Now what that means is, compared to say like a bread dough, which is flour, water and salt and uh, yeast, or if you're using a sourdough and natural ferment, we're gonna be enriching it with butter and eggs. So first of all, right here, I've got 500 grams of strong bread flour. Now that's gonna go straight into our bowl. So we're just gonna zero it like you would on the normal scales and add in our flour. So we've got our bread flour into the bowl. Now we're gonna add our sugar. So we've got 60 grams of sugar and 10 grams of salt. Now you notice I've kept my ingredients separate on purpose, even though they're going into the same bowl, because we don't want the salt to react with the yeast together. So we're just gonna crumble. I'm using fresh yeast. You can use dried yeast, it's no problem at all. So I'm just gonna crumble that into the bowl. So, yeast is crumbled in. Now just simply, so with this attachment right here at the back, everything's so well made on this machine. Just push it down and lower until it clicks. Now you'll see the display changes from the scales now to like all of the different settings. So what we want is just to start off nice and slow. You can use a timer so we can put the timer on. And just gently incorporate the yeast, the sugar, the salt and the flour. So as normal, everything's controlled here from the dial. Again, really sturdy, really well made, but also the way it illuminates and just negative is to turn the machine down and positive to turn the machine up. So we're just gonna incorporate here our flour, our yeast, salt and sugar. I'm just gonna get our yeast that we've got from the side. Everything is really well incorporated. Now, I'm going to turn the machine down and slowly add in our eggs one at a time. So slowly incorporate the eggs. Just give the side of the bowl just a little clean. Back in. Another one of the features that I really love is the way that you have this nice light, beautiful light that sits under the driving mechanism which turns the whisk or the dough hook which we're using and really lights up the bowl so you really see 
everything in the bowl being incorporated in. And it's actually quite handy shining the light on ingredients like this because you can really see what's happening. So our dough now is combined in beautifully. And next we're gonna add tepid water. So we've basically got here 125 ml of tepid water. Just a bit at a time. And you really see now the hook working beautifully, bringing everything off the sides of the bowl and incorporating. You can even hear that different sound as it starts to form a beautiful ball of dough. Now these are simple ingredients, but it's important to buy a really good quality flour like what we're using here. But we've also got these incredible Cornish egg yolks from St. New Farm. So nice, rich orange egg yolks. We've got a lovely, rich Cornish butter. Just gonna add a touch more water. I'm just gonna turn that down to two, back on, and just add the rest of our water. That's quite a wet dough. Now when you're making a dough like this, like that is quite a dense mixture in there and you know this has a 1500 watt motor so that is seriously powerful. Final lift just to turn it over. Now, at this stage of the recipe, we've just got our butter left, so that's gonna make our dough really, really enriched. We've got those lovely egg yolks in there. I'm now gonna leave that for about eight to 10 minutes. I've got it on speed setting three at the moment. I'll probably turn that down to two after about five minutes. And basically what's happening here is we are just stretching the gluten in the flour and just making our dough really nice and elastic, so we've got a really, really good dough. So again, when we, when we kind of like prove it and make our balls, it's not pulling in on itself because the dough has properly been worked, which this Kenwood does brilliantly. So our dough is beautifully folded. Now, I've turned the mixer off and let that relax for about a minute. Now, Depending on what ingredients you're using, say like your flour, if the dough's a little bit too wet, then add a little bit more flour. If you find that it's quite dry and it's coming off the bowl quite easily, then add a touch more tepid water. But a dough like this is very enriched, but it's also important that it's wet, that it's got a lot of hydration, because further down the line, that will make for the best donuts. So I've allowed this now to rest for one minute. I'm gonna turn the machine back on. I'm on setting two, and I'm slowly gonna add the butter a little bit at a time. Now, I cannot tell you how important it is to have all of your ingredients, not just your butter, but all of your ingredients at room temperature. Now, there's a reason for this. If the ingredients are at room temperature, everything will just fold beautifully into the mixture. If your butter is cold, then what's gonna happen is it won't break down and you'll have lumps of cold butter all through the mix and you won't have this lovely, rich, shiny dough. The beauty of this is the way that that hook goes all the way to the bottom and just captures everything in the bowl. And there you have it. As you can see, our dough is really shiny from the beautiful egg yolks, the gorgeous butter. By mixing it how we've done it in the, in the stages is giving our dough a beautiful elasticity, so it's really elastic. The gluten is really working in the dough. Now what we're gonna do is just take off the hook, as this is so simple, twist and come out. And you'll see there, we've got this, I mean, look at the color of that already before we've even, got to the proving stage and rolling stage, we have got a beautiful, beautiful dough. Now, if you haven't got one of these, no problem at all. Use a Maurice, a scraper, whatever you like. So this is called a pastry scraper or a pastry card. So we're just gonna grab the bar and we're just gonna go in. 
So you can see we can form that. I'll show you that lovely. I mean, just look at that. Oh my goodness. Like that. Quick clean of the hands. And now we're going to come onto a function which I again think is absolutely brilliant. We're going to put some cling film, just like you would if you were going to prove in a traditional sense. So what proving means is, is we're going to, we're going to add a warmth to the dough. Now that warmth is generally around 25, 35 degrees, you know, 30 degrees is, is about perfect. And what happens is the warmth then activates the yeast. And that is what makes our dough prove. Pop it back onto the machine, twist into place. So we've got our cling film over our bowl and now we go back to the main preset. So over. And if you scroll down, you'll see you've got dough kneading. Uh, we're going to use dough proving. Now here you'll see, if you select there, you can actually change the warmth by going up and down. Now it recommends to, and that's exactly where I'm going to stay. It's already set at an hour, which is actually the perfect proving time for this dough that we're using. So we're going to go back onto the time, push it once. It basically illuminates red to tell you that it's proving. And that's it, the timer counts down and it will let you know when it's finished. And that is your dough proving, which for me, I think is a phenomenal feature for this machine because quite often, even in professional kitchens, if the temperature's low or you haven't got that perfect setting for proving, it can be quite difficult. So to be able to do the whole thing in the machine, even going back as far as when we weighed it in there, we've made our mix in there, now we're proving it in there, what a piece of kit, absolutely brilliant. The Kenwood is fantastic for this. So the machine has automatically come to an end. It's counted itself down from the hour and it's had a one hour prove, which is brilliant. So we're just gonna lift that up, twist off, remove our cling film. Okay. Straight away, you remove that cling film and you just get this hit of like, warm yeast, love it. So on our surface, we're just gonna quite heavily flour it because this is a very, very wet dough as I explained earlier. Now, if you've got a pastry card like this, perfect. And just out onto the surface. Okay. Now this, is, this technique is called knocking back. So you'll see, what the yeast has done is basically put air, it's basically let off the carbon dioxide into the dough and we're just gonna knock it back. You can see and feel the air just coming out of the dough. And that's what the yeast has done by reacting and basically increasing the size of our dough, doubling it. And what we're doing now is just knocking back that air now, you might be saying to yourself, oh, it seems like a lot of work, but you're making donuts. Is there anything quite better than making your own proper donuts? Like the donuts you grow up with as a kid, getting them from the bakery. And then you are in control of what you want to fill them with. Trust me, it is worth the effort. So we've knocked that back. And like I said, we've just knocked all the air out. We're going to put that straight back into the bowl. Reuse that cling film like that, back onto the machine, twist, now it says continue, I'm just going to select one hour, red light comes on, timer is on, you can see it counting down from the hour, and there we are, leave it for another hour and the machine is doing all the work for you. So same again, your dough has now had its second proof. So it's come from the Kenwood after one hour. We've taken it out of the bowl and put it onto our nicely floured surface and we've rubbed some flour over the top. You can see how light and airy it is and basically the yeast really, really doing its job. So what we're gonna do now is we've got some scales, a heavily floured tray, some excess flour for dusting. 
I'm just gonna make sure my hands are well dusted. My pastry card is nicely floured. And I'm just gonna roll it into like a, like a sausage shape, but I'm being really gentle, really, really gentle, because I don't want to knock out too much air at this stage. So we're just gonna mold it into a long sort of sausage shape. Okay, and we're going to go for 50 grams. So I'm going to go about there into a ball, see where we're at. 44. So we'll just put a little bit more there in with that. And there we are, 50. Okay, so what we do is, again, making sure your card is nicely... heavy on that one, you want to take a little bit off. These excess bits then put them, put them back together so you have no wastage whatsoever. You get the idea. Into your bench your hand like that, cup it over. And it's at the back of my hand, it's not at the front of my fingers, so it's kind of rolling about in my palm, giving it a lovely round shape. And you want them a nice distance apart on the tray, so they're gonna have their final and third prove on the tray before we put them into the hot oil. So they will increase in size again, so it's good to have a good distance apart from them. Now this recipe will make about 20 donuts. I'm going to keep on rolling, but you get the gist of what we're doing here. We're keeping a nice distance apart. You probably go a touch closer. You definitely get them all onto this tray. They're not going to increase that much in size. And again, over a really, really light tea towel or a nice thin piece of cling film over the top and then into kind of like a really nice ambient, dry, warm place. The final proof will take about 30 minutes and then once we've got the final proof, we then come back to cooking and filling. Okay, to the final part of your donuts. The most exciting part, cooking them, not long now until we're enjoying them and filling them. So you can see here, look how they have increased in size, smell incredible, the dough is just enriched and full of that lovely flavour of the butter and those rich eggs. Now just very, very simply, using our trusty pastry scraper, we will just go lift them off like that, be very, very gentle and then just go straight into the oil. Now our oil is at 180 degrees. Now I'm using a pan and I've just used a thermometer. So now I'm just using what we call a spider, but again, you know, something that you just strain vegetables with. I'm sure you've all got something like that or a spoon with holes in. Just move them away from each other and just basically let them do their thing. And they'll roughly take about two to two and a half minutes each side. Now, when I was growing up as a kid, I always used to remember going to a, a bakery in a little local place I lived in um, called Bitten Park in Southampton. And there was a bakery there called G Cotton. And I just remember looking at the donuts and the big trays and they just looked so beautiful, oozing with jam. And as a treat, my dad would get them. And I think the thing that I used to be f sort of fascinated by was that white ring around the outside that actually to me makes them look like a proper donut and really delicious and it was only until I became a chef that I realized how that works and that's obviously frying one side turning over frying the other side and you create that white ring around the outside so uh, but for me that's all all the part of the donuts charm so we've there we're about probably one and a half minutes there. So we've, we'd, I'll just take one out quickly so you can start to see the colour on that side. I mean, just see that. So I'll go about another minute and then I'll turn them. 
and they're just cooking really beautifully. And it's worth the effort. That's what the proving's for. That proving, the first prove, the second prove, and then the final prove when you've cut them and rolled them is so important. That is what's creating the air. That's what's giving you the lovely bu bubbles. If you don't prove them properly, then you're going to make for a really chewy donut. So it's so important to prove them. Okay, I'm just going to turn those over. Look at that. <laughs> And there you can see the famous ring that I'm talking about. Beautifully golden. And now you're cooking as well. That fat inside the dough is doing its job. Those wonderful eggs doing their job. That lovely sugar and sweetness, which will be caramelizing the salt, which will just be giving it that little element of savoriness. I wish you could smell this. Look at those. I'm just standing them up because then we want them to cool evenly. I think you'll agree they look a bit special. Right, so in here I've got just a beautiful vanilla custard, okay, with a little piping nozzle. Grab the end, pick up your donut, take it into the palm of your hand, and just make a little incision at the top. Push the nozzle in and just pipe. You want to be incredibly generous. Feel the donut like expand in your hand. So you literally can't get any more in there. Take it into the sugar, roll it around. Into your little box. We're not finished yet. We're just going to repeat the process. So plunge your nozzle in, pipe as much as you can get in there. Feel the donut expanding into your hand. And then roll it around in the sugar. The fact that it's coming out the top like that, that's a good sign. Okay. Into your box. final one. Now you can see you filled them so much but just put a little bit more on top. Like that. And then just finish with some lovely big chunks of honeycomb. If you want to make your honeycomb, go for it. If not, go and buy a crunchy bar. Just as good. And there you have it. All that work and effort, I think you'll agree, totally worth it. Homemade donuts. Again, all the work done by the Kenwood Chef Titanium. Vanilla custard and honeycomb. Enjoy. <laughs>